Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Military Forces Unleashed. Today we're diving into the deep blue to tackle a fascinating question. When it comes to modern naval warfare, how does Japan's Akazuki destroyer stack up against Germany's Miko 200 frigate? These two vessels represent the pinnacle of naval engineering for their respective nations, embodying different philosophies of maritime dominance. It's a bit like comparing a katana to a Swiss army knife. Each is deadly in its own way, but the choice depends on your mission. In this episode, we're breaking down their differences, strengths, and weaknesses. Whether you're here for high-tech weaponry or just love a good debate, stick around. By the end, you'll know exactly what makes each of these giants of the sea a force to be reckoned with. Ready to set sail? Let's dive in. To understand these vessels, we need to rewind a bit. The Akazuki-class destroyer, commissioned in 2012, is part of Japan's push to modernize its maritime self-defense force. Designed as an escort destroyer, it's built to safeguard carrier strike groups and amphibious task forces. Think of it as the big brother watching everyone's back, equipped with cutting-edge radar and a serious arsenal to enforce its will. On the other hand, the Miko 200 frigate has its roots in the Cold War. Developed in the 1980s by Germany's Blom Plus Voss, the Miko line is all about modularity. These frigates can be customized like Lego sets, making them a favorite for navies worldwide. With over a dozen variants in service across different countries, the Meko 200 is like that versatile tool in your kit, adaptable and reliable. What's interesting here is the philosophical divide. Japan built the Akizuki to excel in specific high-intensity roles, while the Miko 200 was designed to be a jack-of-all-trades. Both approaches have their merits, but they also come with trade-offs. Let's dig deeper. The Akazuki is a quintessential destroyer, sleek, fast, and packed with advanced tech. It features the FCS-3A radar system, a marvel of Japanese engineering that integrates radar and fire control into a single platform. This system allows it to track and engage multiple targets simultaneously, making it a nightmare for enemy aircraft and missiles. Its stealthy design minimizes radar cross-section, allowing it to sneak closer to adversaries. But let's be real. At 6 to 800 tons fully loaded, it's not exactly subtle. It's like trying to hide an elephant behind a curtain. The effort is there, but everyone knows it's there. The Miko 200, meanwhile, is all about flexibility. Its modular design allows navies to outfit the ship with weapons and systems tailored to their needs. Want a focus on anti-submarine warfare? Done. Need more anti-air capabilities? Easy. This adaptability has made it a favorite in countries like Australia, Turkey, and South Africa. Unlike the Akazuki, the Miko 200 prioritizes operational range and endurance over brute force. It's smaller and lighter, displacing around 3,500 tons, which makes it more fuel-efficient and easier to maintain. Think of it as a marathon runner compared to the Akazuki's Sprinter. The Akazuki boasts a 32-cell vertical launch system, VLS, capable of firing SM-2 missiles for long-range air defense. It also carries anti-submarine rockets and advanced torpedoes. Its main gun, a 127mm cannon, is no slouch either, capable of engaging surface and air targets with precision. This destroyer is built to dominate the skies and seas, but here's the kicker. All that firepower comes at a cost. The Akazuki is heavily reliant on advanced logistics and support, making it less ideal for prolonged independent operations. The Miko 200's armament varies depending on the operator, but a typical loadout includes a 76mm OTO Malera gun, harpoon anti-ship missiles, and torpedoes. Some variants even feature short-range surface-to-air missile systems like the Sea Sparrow. While it lacks the overwhelming firepower of the Akazuki, the Meko 200 makes up for it with flexibility and cost-effectiveness. With a top speed of over 30 knots, 
the Akazuki is designed to keep up with fast-moving carrier groups. Its high-speed maneuverability makes it a formidable opponent in high-stakes engagements. But remember, speed and power come at the expense of fuel efficiency and range. It's a short-distance sprinter in a world that sometimes demands marathon runners. The Miko 200's operational range of over 8,000 nautical miles makes it ideal for extended deployments. It's not as fast as the Akizuki, but what it lacks in speed, it makes up for in stamina. This makes it a better fit for missions like piracy patrols and long-duration peacekeeping operations. There's no denying the Akizuki's capabilities. Its advanced radar, powerful armament, and speed make it a cornerstone of Japan's naval strategy. But all that comes with a hefty price tag. At nearly $1 billion per ship, it's a significant investment. Plus, its focus on high-tech systems means more maintenance and a steeper learning curve for crews. The Miko 200 shines in its affordability and modularity. It's not as flashy or powerful as the Akazuki, but it gets the job done. However, its lighter armament and smaller size mean it's not as well suited for high-intensity combat scenarios. It's a workhorse, not a show pony. So, which is better? The answer, as always, depends on the mission. If you need a high-tech guardian for critical assets, the Akazuki is your go-to. But if you're looking for a versatile, cost-effective solution for a variety of missions, the Miko 200 is hard to beat. Both ships excel in their respective roles, proving that there's no one-size-fits-all solution in naval warfare. Thanks for sticking with us through this deep dive into modern frigates and destroyers. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button, subscribe, and let us know in the comments which ship you'd bet on in a naval showdown. Until next time, stay sharp and keep exploring the frontiers of military technology. See you soon.